Today, we are here to talk with Mr. Richard Ricky Skerritt about cricket because he is also presently the president of okay. Cricket mm -hmm. West Indies. Welcome to Good Morning Again. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. All right. You want to take the first question? Yes, I would. So how would you describe the entity that is now the West Indies? The that entity. is now Cricket West Indies. <laughs> Well, Cricket West Indies has the responsibility for governing cricket across the region, uh, directly and indirectly through six member boards. And cricket, as you know, is a global sport. It's, it's, we have several teams playing in different formats of the game, including women. And those teams perform in uh, glo actually global tournaments. It's one of the few ongoing global uh, tournaments in, 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 in terms of world cricket where you have countries playing against countries from all ends and areas of the world. We're in the Americas. We're the only full member located in the, Amer in the Americas, which means we're in the top 10 teams that play world cricket. But there are several uh, associated members in South America, Central America, and other Caribbean countries, actually, countries that don't form part of Cricket West Indies. So Cricket West Indies is kind of like the... Uh, let's, we, we're members of the International Cricket Council, and the ICC, as it's called, is kind of like the FIFA of cricket. Okay. I'm on the board of ICC. I'm chairman of the board of Cricket West Indies. And I'm also on the uh, World Cricket Committee of the uh, MCC, which is sort of the home of, of world cricket. All right. So that's a whole mouthful, and it all involves international cricket. Okay. But how did you become involved with this organization? Um, cricket has sort of been my hobby for life. I, I, I began loving cricket as a boy, like many of us, and um, played a lot of cricket as a youth. And my first exposure to leadership in cricket was as captain of a local club, yeah. renowned cricket club. And then I became the first ever captain of the Leeward Islands on the 19 team. Back in those days, the Leewards and Windward Islands played as one team called the Combine Islands team. And when they, uh, what was cricket, what was West Indies Cricket Board at the time, now known as Cricket West Indies. You asked me a question earlier. I didn't say that CWI is really a name change of about mm -hmm. seven or eight years old, oh, okay. which changed so like, from mm -hmm. West Indies Cricket Board to Cricket West Indies. A type it's of rebranding. Yeah, sense. it's a kind of rebranding, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but to go back to that, so I, I had the privilege and honor to, to be the first captain of the Leo Islands on the 19 team. And that sort of, to me, put my foot into the, into the arena of, of leadership, of significance. Uh, it so happened that at the time, the person who was supposed to become our manager had some problems with the court and couldn't travel with us. So I actually... Oh still have the distinction of being the first and only ever <laughs> youth cricket player manager. manager. Congratulations. And I think that sort of <laughs> changed my life. Okay. Um, because the people in leadership in cricket in, in, the Bar in Barbados, who saw this young man leading a team and being manager of the team all at the same time, they were so impressed that uh, they sort of followed my career and um, invited me to, to be manager of the West Indies on the 19 team just a few years later, having been uh, also manager of the Leeward Islands on the 19 team uh, subsequently. So I just, you know, found myself involved in leadership activities in cricket. I, when, after I came back from university, I, I was secretary treasurer of the Leewards board, uh, uh, secretary of the St. Kitts board, that's a long time ago, before you ladies were born. <laughs> That's back in the 1980s. Mm. And then, um, you know, I, I, I was manager of the Leeward Island senior team. 
All these are voluntary positions, obviously. Oh, okay. And then in 19... In the 1990s, I got very much deep into business and so on, and I kind of stepped away from active cricket for a while, but I was involved in sponsoring an under-13 um, festival annually. I, we sort of started an under-13 festival, so I've always been involved in youth cricket. Yes. That's been my, my passion from mm -hmm. my own youth right through to being able to mentor, or to sponsor, or to coach or to do other things. And then when I really got into professional cricket um, was in 2000 when I went on a, a really exciting adventure for four years around the world managing the senior West Indies yes. team. Yes, okay. I recall. And um, later on as a government minister, uh, CARICOM nominated me to be to be a representative on, on the board, to, to be their nomination to get onto the Cricket West Indies board. Mm -hmm. and, and that was back in, in 2013, 2014. So I was a member of the board and then I got elected. Mm -hmm. the, the chairmanship, what we call the presidency, is an elected position. I got elected okay. three years ago. Mm -hmm. Now that's what I call love for the sport because many of these positions, as you said, were voluntary. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it, you know, yeah, essentially, so essentially sports cool. around the region, the, the mm -hmm. people who get into it seriously get in ultimately because of love for the sport and mm -hmm. commitment. Some of us may have a kid that we, we give a little more interest because our children might be involved and so on. But ultimately, you know, that's the problem with sports around the region. Volunteerism is sort of dying. Yeah. Everybody wants to get paid immediately yeah. for whatever they do. And there are some jobs that are payable and others that are not. Right. <laughs> Most people want to be paid. Ricky, we were talking about um, volunteerism for sport, which is still something that happens in the region. But let's also look into the area of how our professional sportsmen and sportswomen get paid compared to international arenas. How does that figure out? Is it something that um, is done on the management level or is something that uh, is done on the local level? Well, I always say that professional sport takes a village, okay? So that village comprises obviously players, players' agents and players' uh, representatives, it could be union-type organizations, uh, the management where they are uh, executive management, and of course the board and the sources of funds, the sponsors, the, the people who pay at the gates, the fans, the broadcasters, you're in the broadcast business, you understand that uh, for you to survive you have to have revenue coming in at the broadcast. So it, it's, it's, it's not a simple equation, it's, it's a fairly complicated equation, but ultimately uh, I can tell you that uh, the volunteerism that I spoke about is at the grassroots level. That's, that's where it starts, and it, but generally speaking it gets up to a professional level. And at semi-professional or the professional level, there is money being paid, mm -hmm. not just to players, but to the people who take care of them, the coaches, the, the, the sports science people. There's a lot mm -hmm. of sports science in, 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 in sport, more and more sports science, more and more uh, specialists, from massage therapists to physiotherapists to medical doctors, sports medicine doctors, especially especially those that have an orthopedic background. And um, obviously the specialist coaches, they're coaches, fielding coaches, batting coaches, bowling coaches. There's a lot that goes into uh, it. Uh, the, the, yeah. the, these teams travel around now with anywhere from 10 to 15 supporting staff. Wow, oh, interesting. And so it, the, the cost of running professional sport is significant. And there's, the balance has to be, as we said, the dance has to be able to pay for the lights. Yes. The, 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 the money going out has to come from somewhere. And that's the difficulty in, in a small market like the Caribbean, where you don't have massive sponsors will, willing to put up millions of dollars and so on. But the, uh, we, we, our players do fairly well. We're, we're, we're somewhere midway in the rankings of, oh, okay. of remuneration. We, that's by, good. By, by world standards, mm -hmm. our, our professional players 
and professional staff get reasonably well paid. Okay. So is there room in the sport for both ODIs and T20s? Because we know T20s come with a hype because we're excited for that. Yeah. Just 20 overs and the ODIs are more laid back. There, there is room. It's, it's a very shrinking calendar. The, the world cricket calendar is, is, is pretty full mm -hmm. because you see, you, you have to find that team to play against, a mm -hmm. team that can get to you or you can get to them. It's across the world. You have to be able to have a, a package that is going to be attractive to the commercial uh, elements. And the, the ICC puts together what's called a Future Tours program where the CEOs from the various organizations around the world spend hours and hours and hours trying to put it's, it's like a it's like a, a principal and staff putting a, a curriculum together putting mm. a timetable together oh, it's complicated. for for the school with with a few hundred students and and a, you know it's like a an athletic meet where you got to time the, the the sprints to to coincide with the with, with the field games and so on, the field events. It, it's, it's not dissimilar, but obviously more complicated. And um, you have the T20 cricket, you have the ODI cricket, and you have the test cricket. Mm -hmm. And then you have men and women, you have young men and young women on the 19. And uh, then you try to do an A team, what we call an A team, which is emerging players, to give them a sort of exposure to world cricket. Okay. It's, it's, it's not easy. And then, of course, you have the local and regional cricket where you have to fit in because you have to have cricket being played at the local and regional level so that you can be preparing players, spotting players, uh, looking for the, your talent pool for the future and so on. So it, it, it is a fairly complex system. Yeah. So then we're wondering if you have a scoop for us. What can you tell us about the, the Hero Caribbean Premier League activities, such as the upcoming T20 series? Selections have begun for matches. They have said where the matches are to be played. Any scoop for us? Well, not a scoop, really, because I think all, most of it has been announced. Yeah. I think. Uh, you, you, you're here located in St. Kitts and Nevis. Uh, St. Kitts and Nevis has been uh, pretty well served by West Indies cricket over several years. Um, you, you might recall that um, we hosted the 2007 World Cup yes. back in, that was a 50, that was a, um, a 50 over World Cup. And, and that was the launch of St. Kitts Warner Park as an international stadium. It, it had opened up the year before and hosted India uh, in, in one inaugural match that announced that Warner Park Senkits was now an official world stadium in cricket. And I'm happy to say that on August uh, 1st and 2nd, this year, India will be here again. Okay. Um, the, the CPL that you speak about, um, as you see, uh, through a relationship between uh, CPL and the government uh, last year, the entire CPL tournament was hosted yes. here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, it had to be done in one country as it had been done the previous year in Trinidad because of the pandemic. Yes. Let me just say that the pandemic has been a tremendous challenge for uh, world sport generally, not only from the commercial perspective, but from the, the med medical perspective, the yes. protocols involved in yes. keeping players safe and still running uh, the movement of the players across mm -hmm. the region through hotels, airports, mm -hmm. airplanes, mm -hmm. the loss of airlift across the region yes. and the mm -hmm. extra cost of having to charter planes to move players, having to overnight players sometimes for three nights before they could catch a regular flight like moving from yeah. South Caribbean to North Caribbean. Yes. It's been a it's been a bit of a nightmare. Sure. But fortunately we were able to to keep cricket going and then mm -hmm. grow it again and, and, and we pretty much back to normal scheduling but not normal uh, management. Covid is still a factor yes. 
and um, the the more games are being centered in one venue now than before okay. for that reason. Okay. We used to move the teams around a lot more than, than we are doing. Yes. Give more of the same event across the region. No, we having to do different events right, across the region. But cause, yeah, because we know that redounds to economic benefit to each of those areas, these yeah. islands yes. where the matches are taken. But in conclusion, can you tell us what the future of the sport looks like? Well, in, in, in the very short term future, let me just say that women's cricket looks very exciting. Okay. I have to tell you that you're going to see women's CPL for the first time, mm. and you're going to see it here in St. Kitts. Yes. You're going to see it here in St. Kitts. <laughs> Heard it here first. Yeah. Um, the the <laughs> women's cricket, although commercially not yet viable, women's cricket is the fastest growing, one of the fastest growing sports in the world. It is certainly the fastest cricket area at the moment growing. And uh, the recent World Cup in Australia, uh, sorry, in New Zealand, um, the well, I think you saw it happening here in 2018 when the Women's World Cup was in the Caribbean. And since that time, women's cricket has continued to move. But one of the hallmarks of my leadership as, as Cricket West Indies president has been to, to invest heavily in, in women's cricket, as limited as the resources have been. We, have, we, we hired an icon, Courtney Walsh, uh, to, to lead our women's cricket program and um, we've just come back from that same World Cup in, in, in New Zealand where we did fairly well. We got into the semi-finals. It's the first time that we've done so well in, a, in, the, in an ODI tournament. Okay. Our women, nice. uh, like, the men, sorry, like the men, play the T20 much better than they play the longer versions. <laughs> yeah. But we're working on all fronts and mm -hmm. um, we have uh, on the 19 uh, World Cup coming up in 2023, and uh, the West Indies will be part of that. Mm -hmm. The Leeward Islands, where we live, uh, have been the least active in women's cricket. Okay. Oh, okay. So. Um, women's cricket is huge in the Southern Caribbean, uh, and but beginning to, to, to generate uh, what we want to see in these islands, right, so including St. Kitts.